In today's video, we are working on a 2001 Mitsubishi Eclipse that needs a CV axle on the passenger side. CV stands for constant velocity and the name speaks for itself. This axle provides constant torque from the transmission to the wheel, whether the car is going straight, turning or going over bumps. Rubber boots on CV joints wear out and break over time, slinging grease all over. Lack of lubricating grease inside the CV joint causes excessive wear. If left unattended, outer CV joints will start clicking during sharp turns. Inner CV joints will cause vibration under acceleration due to excessive play at the joint. This one seems good for now. Further damage can include complete separation of the joint, which means your car won't go anywhere and will have to be towed. And that's why whenever you see a broken CV boot, it is recommended to replace the axle. One last thing before we begin. Back in the day, technicians used to repair axles, but today the labor rate in the United States is so high that it is cheaper to buy a new or remanufactured axle than pay a mechanic to fix your old one. So let's begin. Raise and support the vehicle, remove the wheel, And there's our axle nut. And there's the axle. In order to pull the axle out of there, we are going to need to remove this pinch bolt. That way we can disconnect the lower control arm from the knuckle. Some people also disconnect the tie rod end from the knuckle. So it's easier to move it out of the way, which helps when you're installing a new axle. First, let's remove the cotter pin. Next, using a 32mm socket, let's remove the castle nut. If you don't have an impact gun, you can use a pry bar to hold the hub spindle in place. And with a rubber mallet, let's free up the axle from the hub. Next, let's put a wrench on one side of the pinch bolt and a socket on the other. Remove the bolt and separate the lower control arm from the knuckle. Don't be shy to hit the ball joint area of the control arm with a hammer if you need to. Then using a pry bar separate the two. You can also throw a chain around the control arm, tie it with a nut and bolt and pry the lower control arm down and out of the knuckle. I have a special tool designed specifically for it. Once the lower control arm is disconnected from the knuckle, you can pull the knuckle toward yourself and push the axle out of it. Now in order to pull the axle out of the transmission, or in my case to separate it from the half shaft, I am using an axle popper. And if you're not sure what a half shaft is, essentially it's an extension of the axle that plugs into the transmission. Now, what makes axle popper so nice, it provides pressure on both sides of the axle, unlike a regular pry bar. And if there is not enough room, you can use a hammer to wedge it in and pop the axle out that way. Now, we could remove this splash cover, it is held by only a couple of bolts, but I don't think we need to. And there goes our axle. Compare it to the new one, make sure they look the same and are the same size. Looks like I am missing this dust shield. Let's clean the area. Up, oh, there is the old dust shield. Quick note, if there is, if the new axle came without the dust shield or the ABS ring, make sure to transfer them over to the new axle. Be careful not to damage the teeth on the ABS ring because it can affect the ABS reading. Use dull objects and rubber mallets to transfer it over. Now let's install the new axle. Again, probably would help if I removed the splash cover. Learn from my mistakes. If you have an assistant, have them pull the knuckle out of the way so you can have a straight shot installing your axle. Hammered in and reverse the removal procedure. Fit the axle in the hub, fit the lower control arm in the knuckle 
and hammer it in until you can fit the pinch bolt through. Install the washer and the axle nut, tighten it up. Now if the castle nut doesn't align with one of the two openings in the axle, use a regular half inch ratchet or a breaker bar to turn it a little further until you can fit a cotter pin through. The new axle should come with a new cotter pin, do not reuse the old one. Install the wheel, lower the vehicle, torque the lug nuts, and go test drive it. If this video was helpful, please give it a thumbs up, share your experience in the comments below, links to the products you saw in this video will be in the description. Thank you for watching, good luck and take care.